Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back. I want to finish off this chapter, chapter 7, by talking about two useful techniques for analyzing two-dimensional and I'm going to restrict myself to the plane, in this case, autonomous vector fields. I know that two dimensions is fairly restrictive, but it, it, they're useful to know. So, so these are go by the name of Bendixson's Criterion and the Index Theorem. So the setup, to begin with, we consider CR R greater than or equal to 1. We're going to have to differentiate the vector field. We want existence and uniqueness of solutions. And the general form of the equations that we look, that we're going to study is the following. X dot equals f of x and y. Y dot is g of x and y. So Bendixson's criteria, criterion, is it says this if on a simply connected region D of the plane, so this region simply connected, just think of it, it can have no holes in it. Um, I'll leave it at that for the moment. If this expression, which is easy to compute, is not identically zero and does not change sign, then the vector field has no periodic orbits lying entirely in this simply connected region D. It could have some that lie outside and part, part, partly outside, partly inside, but no, that's not what this says. Entirely within D, the region where this quantity 722 is not identically zero and does not change sign. So you see, this is this is a useful thing. It doesn't always work, but when it does work, it's really pretty nice. Um, you can compute it. You can de make determinations about specific trajectories, periodic ones, without actually solving the equations. So let's look at two examples. We know this example from the last chapter and from the Solomon Variance Principle. And now, I'm assuming delta is strictly greater than zero. So we compute this quantity. And what do we get? We get it's minus delta. So it's not identically zero if delta is strictly greater than zero and it doesn't change sign. Well, where's this simply connected region? Just take the entire plane. Take any, this is constant everywhere. So you could be clever about your choice of region, but this vector field has no periodic orbits. Okay, let's look at a, another example. x dot equals ax plus by, y dot is cx plus dy. It's a linear vector field. It has an equilibrium point at the origin. Um, and what are the, what are the, uh, the coefficients or parameters, a, b, c, and d? They're just, just let them be arbitrary real numbers for the moment. Compute this quantity in Ben Dixon's criteria, and you'll get that it's a plus d. So, for a plus d non-zero, this vector field has no periodic orbits. Now, this, this is, has, has a lot of very interesting implications. Uh, you can play with this and look at it in a variety of ways. Uh, I'll leave it to you. The origin is an equilibrium point. The matrix associated with the linearization is the obvious matrix a, a b c d and you can compute the eigenvalues of that with that handy little formula in appendix a and you can see what the, the relation may mean for the eigenvalues of that uh, associated with that um equilibrium point at the origin for this linear vector field okay i'll stop there now and i'll come back and talk about the index theorem and how we can use that in conjunction with Ben Dixon's criterion. So, see you next time.